Have you ever built your own custom plywood vanity before? Well, this is going to be our second vanity build and this one's going to be big. And I mean big. This vanity is 118 inches. This build was a lot of fun. Welcome back to our latest episode of our bathroom remodel series here at Home by AM. Our latest project is building this custom plywood vanity with drawer boxes and Blum undermount drawer slides. This episode we're going to cover building all the cabinet boxes and drawers and installing it into the bathroom. And next episode is going to cover making drawer fronts and getting the counter installed. Let's start this project from the beginning. Let me show you. Let's dive into materials. For this build, I'm going to be using 3 4 inch pre-finished birch plywood. And for the cuts, I'm going to be using a combination of this Craig Circular Saw Guide and my table saw for more precise cuts. The key is getting things down to more manageable sizes and then cleaning it up on the table saw. I'm doing all the light cuts at the same time. This saves a ton of time and it also makes sure everything is exactly the same size. Let's talk a little bit about the specs of this vanity. It's going to be 118 inches and 4 base cabinets. That's all the depth cuts, now just the length cuts. For the depth, we decided on 21 inches, which is pretty standard for all vanities. For the boxes themselves, two of them are going to be at 23 inches and then two of them at 35 inches. For the height, we decided on 36 inches, which is kind of tall, but it's starting to become industry standard. All of our main cuts are done now, now we just need to cut some smaller cross bracing pieces. These cross member pieces are going to go along the top and the backs. You'll see. Everything is looking really good and spot on. Let me make sure I have enough pieces and that's a wrap. Well, that's all the cuts. In terms of the joinery, we're going to be using pocket hole screws for the cabinets and dados rabbits for the drawers. Let's start cutting pocket holes. Now there's some debate on what's the best type of joint for assembling cabinets, but I just love pocket holes. They're easy to cut and easy to assemble. If you're interested in getting started with pocket holes or learning about it, my last video went over this entire process using the Craig pocket hole jig. Let me know if you have any questions on it. It's seriously a great joint for beginners. Pocket holes look really good. Edge banding up next. We're going to be using red oak veneer for the edge banding to match our red oak door fronts that we're going to be building later on. Before we even start applying our edge banding, we need to double up some of our panels to create thicker pieces. This is not typical of vanity builds, but we decided we want one inch reveals between door fronts, so this step is needed. Now back to edge banding. Now if you've never used edge banding before, it's a great way to create a finished look on the edges of plywood. It's basically a very thin layer of wood with glue on the back of it that all you do is heat up and press on. There's definitely an art to it, Michelle has this process down. This edge banding looks great, let's assemble the vanity now. Assembling the vanity is pretty straightforward. I just need some pocket hole screws and some wood glue. The wood glue is the most important part. It's really what holds everything together. The pocket hole screws just hold things in place while the glue dries. The most challenging part is getting the edges lined up square. Other than that, it's just glue, screw, and repeat. Oh yeah, in time. Always time. Well, cabinet fabrication is done. We just need this glue to dry overnight and then we can get them installed. Then it's drawer fabrication and door front fabrication. 
We're about a third of the way there. All right, so cabinets are dry and everything's looking really good. Two things to go over before we install these. First being the dividers that go between the drawers. We're gonna install those after we fabricate the drawers. We got some more measurements to do and we wanna be really precise with that. Second thing being the toe kick. We're gonna to fabricate that now as a base for these cabinets. Let's continue. So there's a couple different ways to make a toe kick. We're gonna be making ours out of two by fours. This has worked really well for us in the past, so we have no intent on changing it. Some builders will integrate the toe kick into the bottom of the boxes, but building the base first allows us to get it really level and really secure. A stable base will mean a stable vanity. All it takes is securing this base into the wall studs. I'm gonna add some plywood on top for a broader mounting surface. This is the stage where I make any micro adjustments and level as I go. The plan is to place the cabinet boxes on top and not do any leveling, just screw directly into the wall and down into the frame. Wow, this is looking really good. Let's bring those boxes inside. Everything seems to be fitting really good. Let's double check for level. All right, perfectly level. Let's uh, screw the boxes together and then screw it to the wall. Screwing the boxes together first allows me to screw the vanity into the wall as a unit. This will eliminate any need to micro adjust individual boxes. This is going really smoothly, but that's because before I installed the drywall in this bathroom, I added extra blocking inside the wall, specifically for mounting this vanity. This is looking really sturdy now. I think we can install the plywood on top next. The purpose of this plywood is to create a wider mounting surface for the counter and sinks. Our counter fabricator will cut the holes for the sinks later on. Let's do one final check for level. Vanity is in and it's looking really solid. The next step is gonna be a lot more challenging than this though. Drawer fabrication. The measurements have to be really precise and the joiner is a lot tougher. So I'm gonna take some measurements and then we'll get started. For the drawers, we're also gonna be using birch, but unfortunately for this half inch stuff, it doesn't come pre-finished. So we're gonna be doing our own finishing after assembly. Before I start making cuts, I'm gonna change out the throat plate for a zero clearance insert to prevent blowout and get nice clean cuts. So what the heck is a zero clearance insert? Well, a normal table saw throw plate has a large gap where the blade comes through. This doesn't support the plywood enough. It can lead to the wood splintering where you make the cut. This happened a ton on my previous drawer build. By cutting our own hole in the throw plate, this allows for zero gaps and full support of the plywood. This is my first time using this method. Let's double check and make sure these cuts come out cleanly. Now that's a smooth cut. 57 more to go. Wow, that zero clearance insert made a huge difference. Everything came out really clean, no tear out. I'm gonna cut the dados and rabbits up next. Everything on the table saw with a dado blade. So we've done pocket holes and this can be used for drawer assembly, but I think dados and rabbits creates a much stronger drawer. To get this job done, I'm gonna be using a quarter inch dado stack. These here are called setup bars and they help me set up the table saw blade. They eliminate the need to use a tape measure to set the blade height and the distance from the fence. This is an absolute critical step if I want my datas and rabbits to fit up nicely with no gaps. Since my plywood is not a true three fourths and it's actually 23 30 seconds, I have to use a combination of the quarter inch and seven 30 seconds inch setup blocks. This is a variation of the quarter 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 method of drawer assembly. Now to set up and start cutting the rabbits. So these dados and rabbits are coming out really good. The remainder of the rabbits are either really short or really long. 
which means it's getting kind of risky cutting them up and down. So I'm gonna start cutting them flat, which means I need to set up a zero clearance fence. I don't want any injuries and bleed out all of these damn floors. So for a zero clearance fence, I'm gonna need a scrap piece of plywood. Then I need to drill a couple holes to mount these specialty fence clamps. These will allow me to mount the plywood along the fence without getting in the way. Now I can bring my new specialty fence right up to the blade. That's the rabbits all finished up. I've got one more set of datas to do. This one for the bottom panel of the drawer. It needs to be 15, 30 seconds thickness, so I need to change out the dado blades. So this is now a big cut, basically a half inch. I need to add these chipper blades. Now I can create this large dado for the bottom panel to sit in. Well, we're looking pretty good. We're almost ready for assembly. The final step is notching all the back of the drawers for our undermount drawer slides and notching where the P-trap's gonna go. Now this is only needed because we're trying to maximize space inside the drawers. Let's glue up some drawers. With everything cut and measured to the T, this step should be pretty straightforward. It might just need a little bit of finessing since I left pretty tight clearances. I've got plenty of clamps so I can glue up multiple drawers at the same time. My focus is to get everything to seat up nicely. I was very meticulous with measuring and planning, so it's nice that everything is fitting up well. One recommendation I have is make sure you label all your pieces so you don't get confused during assembly. Okay, we're about halfway there. Since I have those tight clearances, some of these are a little bit of a challenge to assemble, but I'm getting the job done. I prefer the tight clearances because it creates a more stable joint when clamping. Just a few more. And that's a wrap on drawer assembly. All right, all of our drawers are dry now. Final steps, installing the drawer slides. I'm gonna be using both Movento and Tandem drawer slides. The install for them is exactly the same. Super easy to install. I'm gonna use Blum's jig to pre-drill all the holes. Now this Blum jig is not an absolute must, but it sure does make things a lot easier. It helps with installing these locking devices, which hold the undermount drawer slides in place. The jig can also be used to notch the back, which is also required to hold the undermount drawer slides. Drawer slides can look intimidating to install, but they're actually pretty straightforward. All right, let's bring them inside. With the slides test fit on the drawers, I can start mounting them in the sides of the cabinets. The slides are fully adjustable, so there is some room for error, but Michelle and I want really tight clearances for our drawer fronts, so we're being very careful when we install these slides. So far, everything is coming out really good. One thing that's helping is I'm setting all the drawer slides on top of this piece of plywood to standardize the install. This is so much better than measuring and marking. It eliminates any room for error when measuring. Accuracy and precision in one, you can't beat it. Let me know if you have any tips during install, I'm always trying to get better. I love Blum drawer slides. Super easy to install after you get the boxes cut. They're really sturdy and their soft close is really nice. They're a little more on the expensive side, but I think they're totally worth it. And they're really forgiving. Unfortunately, some of our boxes we cut a 16th to a 32nd of an inch too wide and they fit in there no problem. We're almost wrapped up with this episode. Next episode, we're gonna have to be a lot more accurate with our measurements. All right, time to make some drawer fronts.
Red oak door fronts and a calicotta Monet counter, a custom vanity part two, coming soon.